Players, how you doing? Welcome back to Players Guide. On this episode of Players Guide, we're going to take a look at what Nintendo brought to the table in the late 90s on the N64 for fighting games. Now, a lot of these fighting games are a real product of time. Uh, 3D Fighters was the new thing at the time. Uh, Tekken was all the rage in the arcades. And Nintendo didn't have Tekken. PlayStation had Tekken. And they also had a lot of really good other fighters as well, like Marvel vs. Capcom and Marvel Super Heroes. And, well, they, they had... Like, a ton of great ones. Rival Schools, Dark Stalkers. You know what? I went through all of the N64 fighting games and suffered through them so that you don't have to. So please subscribe to the channel. You could at least do that for me. And maybe give it a like. And then, when I do get around to covering all of the PlayStation games, you could watch that episode too. Now, after the Nintendo 64, Nintendo didn't really focus much on fighting games. On the Super Nintendo, they did a pretty good job uh, with all the Street Fighters and Mortal Kombat's, given I know they didn't have blood in the original and the Genesis did. But overall, there's quite a few pretty good fighters on the Super Nintendo. But what did the N64 do good? Well, it didn't have load times for the games, and it had Killer Instinct Gold. Beyond that, let's take a look at these other games that were released on the Nintendo 64. Such as Biofreaks. Now, this game has this post-apocalyptic 80s cyber cult classic feel to it that I just love. And I think that's the best part of this game. But it feels a bit clunky. It does lack combos. But it does have some really interesting characters. They don't have uh, much of a background or uh, background story as to why they're fighting or anything at all. But you know what? I'm okay with that. It's a fighter. If you're looking for stories, fighters aren't necessarily always going to be your go-to game. The characters have guns and jetpacks. You can, you know, lose a limb in the game. And there's some interesting characters like Zipperhead, who I believe is featured on the cover. Uh, Psycho Clown, Sabotage, Minitech, which is like a robotic Minotaur character. I mean, I think kids would really be into this game. And I, I maybe they would be allowed to play it. I'm not sure. Biofreaks is a pretty common game, so... If you're interested in picking this up, you shouldn't have any problem finding it on the fly for a decent price. Clay Fighter, 63 and a third. This one's a little bit more uncommon, but there's a really rare version of this game called Clay Fighter 63 and a half Sculptor's Cut that was a blockbuster rental exclusive and is deemed the rarest licensed release Nintendo 64 game of its time. So if you're a completionist, that's the game you're going to want to play. Now what I've got here is some shots from the just the original Clay Fighter, 63 and a third, which is much more affordable if you're looking to play this game. Um, it does have this uh, like power-up style for combos, and it has finishers. This is one of the better fighters on N64 for sure. It has like... Uh, a 3D and a 2D feel. I don't know if you would call it 2.5D, but it's definitely not a full-on 3D fighter. Uh, and maybe that's why it appeals to me a little bit more. Now, you got some interesting characters. You got the return of Mr. Frosty and, Ta and Taffy, um, Blob, Kung Pao, Bonker, but you also have the addition of Earthworm Jim, which I thought was really cool. Deadly Arts is another common game on the N64. Not the most common fighter, but again, you should be able to find this one for a fairly reasonable price. This is a 3D fighter. There's a lot of 3D fighters on N64. It has a Japanese style to it, 
it, there's a lot of like grappling and even like some wrestling moves going on here, uh, suplexes and stuff. Uh, there's a tag. There's no arcade. Wah, 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 unfortunately, uh, the controls are sluggish, and my overall rating in this game would be pretty poor. Dark Rift. Now, here's one that's a little bit different from some of the others. It actually has fluid controls, good button layout, and a background for every character. Now, it does lack combos from what I can see. Matches are fairly drawn out. Zen Muron stood out as uh, probably the only decent character that I played while playing through this game so that you guys could see what it's about. Dark Rift is another one that I uh, shouldn't have any problem coming across fairly common N64 game. Maybe worth picking up, you know, it really depends on the price. Dual Heroes. I'm not sure what characters I'm selecting here. There seem to be two options. Uh, basic combos from what I can see. It looks like you're playing as Power Rangers who have uh, more wrestling moves than uh, Kung Fu. This one's pretty generic. Um, I mean, if you go for a complete set or you're just really hard on for fighting games, you might want to pick this one up. But if you're just looking for something to play, this is a common game. It's not worth too much. I, I would pass on it. Destiny. Fighter's Destiny. Here's a game that's really common and really cheap. So maybe you'll want to pick it up. Um, it looks like mainly, if not only, A and B combos. I couldn't really get too much going here um, in terms of combos or the controls. They seemed pretty basic. There's Robert. A robot scarecrow character and there's also a clown and a cow character I'm not sure what they were going for here I mean maybe they were trying to do like a Tekken feel but it, it really if that's what they were going for it came across as a much cheaper uh, version of Tekken and, and they didn't hit that mark at all uh, it's a point based victory system where you're fighting on a square block. And I don't know why, I kind of liked that a little bit um, because you can pull off some cheap, easy victories uh, to work your way through the ranks of this game. But it does get to a point where it just kind of becomes repetitive and a little bit dull. So let's get to the good stuff. Killer Instinct Gold. By far one of the best fighting games on the N64, and it was also exclusive. Now you could play it in the arcade, but you couldn't play it on your PlayStation. Well, I'm not great at this game, and if you want to play this game, make sure you don't have your Rumble Pack inserted in your controller because you won't be able to play. Uh, there's some new characters that were introduced to the Killer Instinct series that you would never see again until 2013 on the Xbox One. There was also some characters missing from the franchise that uh, were in the first Mortal Kombat that we didn't get, like Cinder, Riptor, and Thunder. Um, there's some real cheese span moves in this game that even the CPU can pull off against you. So, I mean, I'm not a big fan of those except for when I'm using them. And it is more of a 2D fighter style with a 3D background. So it does look really good. The combos are great. Uh, the controls are solid on this one. And this game is not the most common game. But you're going to pay a little bit more for this if you're looking to pick it up. Because it is so desirable. And it is recognized as, well some would say, the best fighting game on the N64, but I would disagree. So if you'd like to find out what other fighting games came out on the Nintendo 64 and what game I think is the best fighting game on the N64, then you're either gonna have to subscribe to the channel or tune in next week to find out on Player's Guide, your source for retro gaming and collecting. Keep it retro later, players. Mm -hmm.